Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing a fun tutorial on a Southwest inspired kind of patina geode situation. Uh, I am also going to provide you guys with a free uh, PNG image for this project. If you'd like to snag that free image up, you can get it in our Flynn Sisters community group under the file section. I will have a link to the community group down in our description box if you haven't joined already. It's a great fun place to be to share your work, connect with other members of the community, and it is a free group. So definitely check that out. Also in this video, I am going to be using some really cool products that I received as a gift from Bridges and Bow Shop. Ashley sent these to me and I am so honored to try these products and share them with you. I've been very vocal about the fact that Ashley was a major part in my cup journey when I first got started and I probably wouldn't even be here right now if it weren't for her videos. So I have an amazing amount of gratitude and respect for Ashley and so I really appreciated her sending me these awesome products and I am so so excited to try them and talk about them in my videos. Uh, and I will have links, of course, to all the products used and mentioned in this video down below in the description box. And let's see what else. I think that's about it. So enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we are starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I have already spray painted brown using the satin espresso color from Rust-Oleum. And we are using the patina paste paints from Prima Marketing. I will have the links to these paints below. And I absolutely love these paints because they make patina cups so easy. It, I literally got this done in under 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> and when you guys get these paints, you're going to notice this blue is super thick. It's almost like a uh, joint compound or something or peanut butter. <laughs> and you're just going to spread this on with a dry brush and it doesn't really matter you know like there's no rhyme or reason here if you want to add more or less blue however you want your piece to look i would recommend making sure your brush strokes go in all one direction okay and again we're just taking a dry brush and doing kind of like random strokes all over the cup All right, and so once we've got this blue coated all the way around the cup how we want it, I'm just gonna let that dry for about 15 minutes. It dries super fast. And then I'm gonna take this copper patina paste. It comes in the same kit. And I'm just gonna scoop out about a tablespoon size amount, I guess. And I'm gonna take a wide like chip brush, These, you know, those cheap old wiry brushes. And with, with it dry, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that copper paint, not too much. I want to blot it off a little bit first and just lightly brush over the blue. Now notice I do have a good amount of the brown still peeking through from our undercoat with our spray paint. And I'm kind of focusing my bronze paint more on those areas where there is like more brown paint left, I guess. 
And again, there's, you know, really no rhyme or reason to this. You just kind of brush it on really quick, however you'd like. Just really be careful not to add too much because that can kind of screw it up. I'll also let you guys know you do not want to mix these paints with like any kind of regular acrylics. Um, didn't turn out well. Don't ask me how I know. And now we're going to move on to these beautiful green variegated gold leaf flakes these are what ashley sent me these are from britches and bow shop again i will have the link for these down below along with this nifty little glue that she sent me i thought was super cool and the jewel picker now my paint has been drying for about a half hour it is fully dry to the touch i already tested a small um space on these flakes and really I just brushed on a little bit of this glue kind of in a random up and down pattern kind of in line with the brush, sto brush strokes that I made with the paint and then with my jewel picker I'm going to take the waxy side and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of these flakes here and I'm just going to very lightly lay them down over that glue glue line that I made. When you lay them on there, you want to just kind of lightly tap on them to make sure, you know, they adhere to the glue okay. And once I get all the flakes that I want on there, I'm going to kind of tap them down a bit to make sure they are, you know, fully adhered. And then I'm going to go over it with this angled paintbrush. This is like a one inch kind of brush, I guess. And I'm just going to lightly brush over this gold leaf to kind of lay it down flat. You don't want to brush too hard and you also want to make sure that your glue is pretty much already dry when you go to do that. Now I'm working in a super warm environment so the glue that I put on there is pretty much just tacky when I go to brush it and that's kind of how you want it. You guys, this is super simple. The paint, so easy. Applying these gold leaf flakes, so easy. This was such a fun and easy project. Anybody could do this and you're gonna get such beautiful results. So I'm just gonna continue with that same process with the gold leaf all the way around the cup in like just kind of random areas that make sense with this patina design. And then I'm gonna let that dry and just kind of brush off any kind of excess if you are worried about your gold leaf kind of moving around you could seal this i didn't um, and then i removed my tape and tried to scrape off some of that excess patina paste paint from the rim of my cup before i went into my first coat of epoxy all right, so we have two layers of epoxy on our cup now, and that second layer has had at least 12 hours to dry before we moved on to this step. And now I'm just going to tape off half of my cup because we are going to be painting like a rustic geode, I guess painted <laughs> section to half the cup, um, which is where we'll also be applying our decal. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, do like a geode painted design over this whole thing, you totally could. Um, however, I'm just going to do a small section. So I'm just roughly taping off half the cup and then I'm going to spray paint one layer of black. Ideally, you'd use flat black, not gloss black, but this is all I had. Then I'm going to do a layer of satin espresso then a very generous layer of flat white obviously you want to let each layer of paint dry before moving on to the next and once all our paint has dried we're going to move on to the distressing part uh, i'm just using an old rag the acetone i'm using is the acetone you get from the hardware store not the nail section and then i'm also using 91 percent rubbing alcohol the little bottle with the blue cap is acetone and the one with the pink cap is rubbing alcohol. So I'm just going to start with the acetone around the top rim and just kind of muddle up that paint and then I will clean it up with the rubbing alcohol. 
Unfortunately, since I used gloss black paint <laughs> on my bottom layer, I'm going to have a very hard time removing my paint. Uh, so just try not to use gloss paint when you're doing this. You wanna stick to satin or flat paints when you're doing a like distressed geode look like this. So I'm just alternating between the rubbing alcohol and the acetone. Remember that the acetone is gonna remove more paint quicker and then the rubbing alcohol is gonna remove less paint slower and that's what you're gonna use to clean up the white section um, and also remove slow amounts at a time to kind of further distress those edges. And it just kind of takes practice um, learning like where and when to use your rubbing alcohol versus your acetone. Also, like sometimes if I have some stubborn areas over the white, I will mix both acetone and rubbing alcohol on my rag and just press really, really hard. <laughs> You're also going to want to be mindful of where your decal is going to be on your painted section. So for this one, I just kind of took my craft knife and carved like small little notches in the paint so I knew where to apply a little bit of tape. In hindsight, I probably should have taped it off earlier, but I forgot. <laughs> So I'm just going to use little pieces of tape as markers and these markers are going to tell me kind of my threshold to how far I can remove the paint. And obviously you do not want to move, remove too much paint because then you won't see parts of your decal later on, if that makes sense. So anyway, I'm just going to continue the distressing process, um, really kind of take your time with this. Yes, it's really hard to remove all the paint off of the white sections, and yes, you're gonna have to apply a lot of elbow grease to get that off while still maintaining that rustic look. So um, my arm usually kind of hurts <laughs> when I get done with one of these, um, but the results are really beautiful. Um, and I just, I love how it turns out. So I just kind of keep working on it. Um, again, be mindful of how much you're removing and that you don't remove too much and you know not have enough space for your decal. Once I get to a pretty good place with how much I've removed around the edges, I'll kind of do a once over again on you know how much space I have for my decal. I'll remove those markers and go over them with some rubbing alcohol so it doesn't look like, you know, you can't tell that there's tape there. And I'm just going to continue cleaning up those white sections as good as I can, get some more distressing around the edges. You'll also want to go over like your, uh, like epoxied section to make sure you don't have any like excess paint on there if that makes sense like go over the parts that there's not supposed to be paint with some just rubbing alcohol and make sure that those parts are totally cleaned up because once you epoxy over this you cannot remove the paint so you want to make sure that you have all those areas cleaned up nicely before you move on to your epoxy also i'm going to sand around the rim of my cup you do not want to sand before you move into that paint layering process because once you remove paint over a sanded section of epoxy, that paint will not come out. <laughs> It'll just look foggy when you epoxy over it later. So anyway, I don't have a lot of serious sanding to do, which is why I'm doing it right after I did that painted section. And then I also like to go over the edges of that <clears throat> rustic painted section with my sanding block to, just to kind of give it a little bit more texture. That's totally optional, you don't have to do that, um, but I just thought it looked cool. Okay, so once I'm done with all the sanding and everything looks how I want it to look, uh, I'll just rinse that off really quick and I will apply a thin layer of epoxy and let that dry for at least 12 hours before moving on to my decal. 
On this case, we're gonna be using a water slide. I've already printed and sealed my water slide. Again, if you guys wanna find this image, you can find it in the file section of my Facebook group, which I will have linked down below. Um, and I just printed it on my water slide paper. I sprayed it three times with Rust-Oleum, two times clear gloss spray. Of course, you'll wanna let each layer of spray dry before you move on to the next. Um, and then my clear gloss spray was totally dry when we moved on to this step and I just kind of trimmed off the excess and right now I have it soaking in some room temperature water. Um, and all we're doing is we are activating the water slide in the water so that it can be removed from its paper backing. So I just want to check on it here and see that it's kind of sliding around on its paper, that means it's ready to go. And then I'm just gonna get my cup wet with a paper towel. That's gonna help us position the water slide when we apply it. All right, and so we're just gonna apply the water slide to the cup now. I'm just kind of positioning it where I want it and then I will slowly slide it off the paper backing while holding one side of the decal and pulling the paper backing slowly off from the other side. And I'm just kind of like smoothing things out with my fingers really carefully. If you guys are having problems with your water slide cracking or like bleeding and things like that, a couple things you want to make sure of is that you want to dry your layers of clear coat pretty quickly between each layer. I usually use a little heater and kind of stand with it or like a blow dryer. And you don't want that clear spray to sit for a really long time. So in other words, you don't want to print these ahead of time, seal them, and then let that sealer sit. You want to use it right away. Also, I think that it's super important that your clear spray paint is fully shaken. Like you have to really, really shake that stuff because you can get weird reactions with your water slide if that clear spray paint wasn't fully shaken. So really take the time and spray it just as well as you would with your spray paint, um, if not you know, more, because it's super important that all of those ingredients in the paint are fully mixed. So we're gonna let that water slide dry for at least an hour, and then I will apply my final coats of epoxy. And that was it, we were done. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I absolutely love how this cup turned out. I love the gold flakes. I can't wait to try new designs with these. And also, if you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss a new tutorial. We'll see you again on Saturday. Thanks for watching. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.